My name is Fred Bassett, and I'm a lawyer. That is, I was a lawyer. And the strangest case I ever had wasn't a dramatic murder or a libel suit or even an interesting divorce. No, the strangest case I ever had was the case of Dave Templeton. If you have time, I'll tell you about it on Theater 5. You might call it the story of a brand new life. <laughs> telling you about the case of Dave Templeton. It was back when I had been practicing law for only three years. Dave made an appointment and showed up on time and asked me, Are you happy, Fred? Sure I am, and that'll be $15, please. <laughs> no, I mean it. Are you happy? I guess so. Why? Because your life is pretty much like mine, isn't it? I guess so. Both of us young. Mm, you married to Edna? Mm-hmm. And you married to Edith? Fred and Edna. Dave and Edith. Sounds solid, doesn't it? Better than solid. The two prettiest girls in town. Oh, that's right. Let's not forget that they're pretty. And that you're handsome and that I'm not a bad-looking guy myself. Fred and Edna, Dave and Edith. Two good-looking couples. That's right. Yep. Both country club members. Correct. You and I shoot golf in the mid-80s. Right. And Edith and Edna both shoot in the 90s. That's right. That's the way everything should be, too, isn't it? Nothing spectacular, just good, solid people. I suppose we are. And successful. Well, that's true, too. Uh, does any of this mean anything? Yeah, all right. Successful, sure. Matter of fact, you're rich. Well, you'll be rich, too. And you want for nothing right now. Rising young lawyer, just as I'm a rising young businessman. Risen. All right, risen. Rising <laughs> young lawyer, risen young businessman. Wife named Edna, wife named Edith. Golf in the 80s, golf in the 80s. Handsome, handsome, handsome. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Correct form, correct form. That lived in the house that Jack built. But, Dave... Can you give me just a little hint as to what in the devil you're talking about? Okay, I'll sum up. I've got a robin's egg blue sedan, a Georgian brick house, a pretty wife named Edith, and a child named Dave Jr. You and Edna have often come to my house for dinner. We have roast lamb with mint sauce and sometimes baked Alaska for dessert. And then we go into the sunken living room and listen to the Rudy Valley Hour on my new $1,000 radio phonograph combination, and almost everybody in town envies me because I've got it made. Hmm. Is that the end of summing up? Yep. All right. Now, you came to see me, Dave, presumably because I'm a lawyer, and all you've told me is that you have it made. What do you want me to do? Unmake it. Huh? Unmake me. Dave, what is this? I want you to handle the transfer of every penny and every piece of goods that I own. Edith gets them, of course. You mean you want everything in your wife's name? Well, that's wise, Dave, but that preamble of yours... Oh, I want more than that. You make over my business to Edith, too. It can run itself by now. You give her the car, the house, everything. Why? Because I'm clearing out. What? I'm clearing out. I'm going to disappear. I'll take a new name. I'm going to start a brand new life. Now, wait a minute, Dave. Uh, is there some uh, some trouble between you and Edith? <laughs> oh, she's a splendid woman. She loves me. I guess I love her, too, sort of. But this isn't the way I want my life to be. Oh, you may be happy this way, but I'm not. I'm clearing up. I don't understand you. <laughs> Maybe someday you will. Anyway, I'm leaving I am going to be a free spirit, penniless by heaven at last, and free. Handle the details, will you? It's all a long time ago now, but looking back, I realize that as I listened to Edna telling Edith what an unconscionable villain Dave was, I felt like defending him. I didn't, though. I never did until all these long years later when life began to taste like ashes in my mouth. What's wrong, Fred? Hmm? What? Wrong? With what? With us. With me. What have I done wrong? <laughs> what makes you think you've done something wrong? You do. Shall I itemize the reasons? Can I stop you? Well, that's the first reason. Can I stop you? Now, you say things like that to me all the time. I suppose I do. And when I wanted to discuss where Sally would go to college, you told me you handle it. 
Well, what of it? A lot of it. Last year you stopped dancing at the club Friday nights, and now this year you won't even go to them. They bore me. They bore me. Because I bore you. You don't have anything to do with it. You can say that to me after all these years. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't cry. You don't, you don't love me anymore. Well, that's not true. I do love you. That's the funny part of it. Don't call our love funny. Well, now, you know what I mean. I love you, if that's what you want to hear, although I hate to say it. A man gets sick of saying it, even though it's true. You hate to say it because it isn't true. Oh, for crying out loud. A man is not just a professional person. Nor, sadly enough, is he just a husband or father. Well, what is he, then? Well, among other things, a man is just a, a taller boy. And boys, and therefore men, dream of duels and treasure hunts and shipwrecks and harems. Harems? Oh! oh all right, strike harems. Men see themselves scaling Mount Everest and, and sailing into Rio at dawn and rescuing maidens from mustachioed villains. You have a pot belly, Fred. Now, how could no, you no, possibly... Now, never mind my pot belly. <laughs> a man dreams of the Taj Mahal and, and the gold rush. And the maidens, I suppose. Yes, and the maidens. Why not? I know what's the matter. What, then? It's my fault. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you it isn't. I'm trying to tell you it's the nature of man. No, no, Fred. You don't know it, but it's because I've let the glamour go out of our lives. Oh, you talk like an advertisement in a magazine. I'm going to dye my hair. I'm going to change perfumes. I'm going to change my makeup. Edna, listen to me. You want to know what's eating me? Yes, I do. The same thing that was eating at Dave Templeton before he went away. Dave Templeton? That libertine? That liar? That traducer of women? That, that wife deserted? That... that wise man. That man who knew enough to get away while he was still young. <sighs> that man who's now probably sailing some uncharted sea. Oh, how I wish I'd gone with him. <laughs> I'm not excusing myself. I'm just telling you the way it was, that's all, and that's the way it would have remained. Dave sailing an uncharted sea, and me envying him. If it hadn't been that Dave's wife, Edith, came to my office. Fred, I wouldn't confide this to anyone but you. Confide what? Well, you were the one who was closest to Dave while he was still sane. Oh, come, Edith. He never was anything but sane. Well, it's a matter of opinion. All right. Here. Here are all the papers he left. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with these? Some of these are just scratch pads. Some are backs of envelopes with little notations on them. But there's also a diary. There are some letters. There are all sorts of things. Well? Fred, Dave Jr. is going to graduate from college next year. Oh, that's fine. It seems only yesterday he was just and a little... And he's ashamed. Hmm? Ashamed of what? How do you think a sensitive young boy likes it that everybody in his class will have a dad at his graduation, except him? Dave Jr. is an all-American tackle. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, it doesn't seem to go with his sensitive role you've cast him in. He weighs 200 pounds. I don't see what his weight has to do with it. He is sensitive. All right. You're sure it's not you that's sensitive? Me. <laughs> Me. You know... You think I want to see Dave Sr. again in my life, ever? Oh, I'm sure I don't know, Edith. Well, I'm through with him. Oh, no. It's not for me. It's for Dave Jr. What's for Dave Jr.? That I'm asking you to find Dave Sr. and bring him back for Dave Jr.'s graduation. If I take this job on, Edith, it's on one condition. Hmm? Yeah, I'll look for Dave, sure. But if I find him... And that's by no means certain. I'm not going to bring him back or even let you know I've found him. Unless he agrees. Well, now... That's my condition. Well, well, all right. But he'll agree. He'll come crawling back. We'll see.
Well, I found Dave, but it wasn't easy. I wasn't very hopeful when I turned my attention to his diary because it was a schoolboy diary dating way back to years before Dave had married Edith. Well, you've been on this a month, Fred. Have you found anything? Not much. But something? Possibly something. Where did you find it? Well, uh, on the back of an old envelope. Well, are you going to get busy on it? Right away. Please do. <laughs> And I did. If nothing came of it, or if I found Dave and he refused to come back, Edith would never know that it was not on an envelope, but in the diary that I had discovered the name of Billy Winston. Billy Winston, an old schoolmate of Dave's. At first I couldn't find him, but finally I did, on the membership list of the Maritime Union. And I made a trip to New York, where I found Billy Winston in the Seafarers Hotel. Uh, what do you want with me, mate? Uh, I'm looking for a man you know. You went to school with him. Who is he? Dave Templeton. Dave? Well... You know him? Sure I know him. Now, there's a guy cut loose while he was still young. Ha! <laughs> I thought he'd come to you when he left home. That's just what he did. When was it? Let's see, uh, 20 years ago or so. About that. You see, I read his diary and found your name in it. Even when he was a student, he admired you so much for your philosophy. Yeah, my philosophy is devil take the hindmost. I know. Well, he came to you when he left home. And then? Sailed with me on the very next voyage. And then? Then nothing. I lost track of him. You mean to say you don't know where he is now? No. Nope. Lost track of him, mate. Oh, well, hang it all. I wanted to find him. Don't you have any idea what might have happened to him? You answer a question first. He inherited money or something? No. You gonna drag him back home? Not unless he wants to come. Well, I can give you one clue. He took a new name, naturally. He took the name Dan Hoffman. That's all I know. Dan Hoffman. Thank you very much, Billy. <laughs> I went back home and went to work and finally found my Dan Hoffman in the town of Nevermind, in the state of none of your business. And I told Edna I'd have to leave town on a business trip. Oh, where are you going, Fred? Oh, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I'll call you when I get there. Is it important <laughs> business? Maybe the most important business trip I've ever taken. Well, then, Fred. What? You need me along. You? What for? to entertain. This is important. There'll be important people to impress. We can have parties at the hotel. Edna, and, no. And maybe the people there, wherever it is, will be entertaining you at the country club. Edna. Oh, you should have me along with you, Fred. Business people like to meet the wife, and if I do say so, I do make a good impression. Edna. See, I wonder if the beige will be all right. Oh, no, it's last year. Edna, but, stop oh, it. Be... What? Stop it. Haven't you listened to the things I've told you? You told me it was an important business trip. I mean the things I've told you about myself, about about how I feel about things. Well, if you mean all that nonsense about the Taj Mahal and the brown-skinned maidens... It's not nonsense. It is irresponsible nonsense. And you got it all from that fool Dave Templeton. He wasn't a fool. He was a wise man. I suppose you want to throw everything away as he did? and wander naked among the sand dunes on some... some mosquito -y island. I don't imagine that's what Dave's done. But if you mean what I like to cut loose, I'd love to. Go ahead. I might just do that. I didn't hesitate. I went to Al Farnsworth, my lawyer. Well, Fred, what can I do for you? Al, here's my power of attorney. What's this for? Here's my bank book. What is this? And here's a list of my stocks. And here are my insurance policies, which have a fair amount of cash value by now. And here's the deed to my house. <laughs> what do you want me to do with these things? Hold them. Hold them until you hear from me. Well, I don't understand. I'll explain. I'm going away tonight. I'm going to look up a certain man. If I find out a certain thing, I'll come back, probably with him. With whom? 
Well, <laughs> Dave Templeton. My gosh, Dave Templeton? Well, he's the guy Yes, who... yes, he's the guy. You said if you find out a certain thing, you'll come back with him. And if you don't... If I find out something else, if I find out what I hope I'll find out, I'll send you a wire. Now, you're my lawyer in this matter, and this is a privileged communication. And so will the wire be a privileged communication. You are never to tell anyone where that wire was sent from. What will the wire say? Cut loose. <laughs> I went to the town where that Dan Hoffman was listed in the phone book. I checked in at a hotel, but not under my own name. And then I called Dan Hoffman, or Dave Templeton. Hello. Mr. Dan Hoffman? Yeah, speaking. Otherwise known as Mr. Dave Templeton? I... Who is this? Dave. This is Fred Bassett. I think you have the wrong number. Dave, I recognize your voice. Listen, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now listen carefully. Edith asked me to find you, but I told her I wouldn't bring you back or let her know where you were unless you wanted it that way. Now, I've tracked you down, but nobody's going to know it but me unless you want them to. I don't want anybody to know where I am. You don't want to come back? Not on your life. <laughs> I hope you want to see me. Fred, you're the only person from my old life that I do want to see. <laughs> I wondered about you a lot. More than I wondered about my own family, my old family, Edith. <laughs> I'd love to see you, you old horse thief, but no tricks. Don't you worry. Uh, look, Fred, uh, there's a place called the 16th Street Bar, 16th and 3rd. Meet me there in about a half an hour. Great, great, Dave. Half an hour. And, and Dave. Yeah? One question. Have you ever regretted what you did? Never. You've got a better life now? You bet I have. More satisfying? Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. That's what I wanted to know. Half an hour from now at the 16th Street Bar. Uh, operator, get me Western Union. 16th and 3rd, 16th and 3rd. Uh, Western Union? Uh, take a telegram, please. Mr. Albert Farnsworth, attorney at law, professional building, Danborough Falls, Ohio. The message? Cut loose. The die was cast. I was a free man. I'd team up with Dave. We'd chip out on a freighter or whatever it was that Dave did for adventure. I went toward 16th Street with a light heart. I was a little surprised at the fact that the bar we were meeting at was a kind of swank place, all leather seats and discreet lighting. But anyway, there was Dave waiting at the bar. Ha-ha, <laughs> Fred! Dave, old boy, it's good to see you. <laughs> Wonderful to see you, fella. <laughs> a little uh, <clears throat> stouter, aren't you? A yeah, little. <laughs> <laughs> tell me all about yourself. Well, the big thing to tell right this minute is that I'm going to do what you did. What? I've just sent a telegram to a guy who has my power of attorney. I'm cutting loose. Wait. Yes, yes, Edna gets everything, the way Edith got everything of yours. I couldn't go back now if I wanted to because Edna wouldn't take me. What's the expression you use, Dave? I'm a... I'm a free spirit. <laughs> hey, that's great. Isn't it, though, huh? Um, uh, uh, Fred, please call me Dan, will you? I'm pretty well known around here, and I wouldn't want... Oh, of course, of course. Dan, Dan. Yeah, good old Dan. <laughs> Even my wife doesn't know anything about my old life. The wife? I, I, I thought, well, she's the prettiest little woman in town. Here, I always carry a picture in the old wallet. What do you think of that, eh? Her name's Evie. Evie? She, she's very pretty. <laughs> yeah. Dan Jr.'s a fine boy, too. Dan Jr.? Ah, uh, he's president of his class. Look, friend, if you're cutting loose the way I did, you couldn't have come to a better community than this. Fastest growing, livest wire community. Well, I made twice the money here that I made in Danbra Falls. Wait till you see my colonial house. <laughs> Makes that Georgian thing I used to live in look sick. Why don't you come home with me for dinner? Well, okay. Good, I'll call Evie. I'll tell her to ask her friend Ellie over. Peach of a girl. 
If you're going to make a new start, you can't do it in single harness, eh? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know that I really want to... Oh, it's no trouble at all. We'll have roast beef and... Then we can watch a TV show on my new color set. Boy, it's going to be great having you here at the country club. Hmm. Cut loose. Presented A Brand New Life, written by Robert Sanadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, George Petrie, Court Benson, Joan Shea, Ruth York, and Ben Yaffe. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastasenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn.